Well, last year, Amazon, the company, made $11 billion in profit. That's one-third of the GDP of the entire state of Vermont. It's a ton of money. But remarkably, Amazon did not pay a single dime of federal income tax. And they're not alone. Dozens of profitable corporations paid nothing in federal income taxes this year. Delta Airlines, Chevron, GM, more. Some of them are even getting tax rebates they can apply later. It's a weird system we have. Our tax code is broken, but almost no one's saying anything about it. Democratic presidential candidate Andrew Yang is. He has a plan that he says would change it. We talked to him about his plan a little while ago. So you make the case that these companies take Amazon, but it could be Chevron, it could be GM, are profitable because of the investment the United States' taxpayers, in part, have given to them, and they're giving nothing in return. How do we fix this? Yeah, and Amazon's the most egregious example, where they're now soaking up $20 billion in business and causing 30% of American malls and stores to close, and taxpayers are seeing zero in return. So if you look at what other advanced economies have done, they've figured this out. They've said, look, we need to have a mechanism in place so that Amazon's going to pay its fair share along with Netflix and Delta and these other companies that are paying zero in taxes. So what they've done is they've adopted a value-added tax, where then the American people would get a tiny slice of every Amazon sale, every Google search, and on and on. And it's very, very hard for companies like Amazon to game their way out of uh, a value-added tax system. So, so why don't we have that? Oh, it's a great question. I mean, uh, people have been uh, advocating for it for quite some time, and my campaign is advocating and championing it right now because we, we need to wise up to the fact that companies like Amazon are very smart and moving their earnings uh, through places like Ireland, where the American taxpayer will see none of it, whereas a value-added tax will make it impossible for them to sell to us without paying into uh, our society their fair share. You mentioned um, the other costs that are often not recorded uh, that stem from Amazon's business model, the, the, the bankruptcy of you know, countless American businesses. But there's also um, the fact that they basically subsidize their labor costs using our social services. How, what's the cost of that, do you think? Oh, it, it's in the billions or tens of billions. And uh, there was one uh, instance where McDonald's actually was sending its people instructions as to how to file for various social services. So you're right that uh, our social programs have been subsidizing the low-wage uh, uh, patterns of many of these employers. So why are you the only candidate who's thinking through what to do about this? It gets kind of weird. Um, I think it's weird. Again, all you have to do is look around the world and say other countries, other advanced economies have figured this out. We're the only advanced economy that does not have a value-added tax in place. Uh, and we need to make sure that the American people are actually seeing some of the gains from the incredible innovation and, and value that companies like Amazon and, and uh, Salesforce and Netflix, all of whom paid zero in taxes last year, uh, are getting away with, really. And they're doing their job, which is to pay as little in taxes as possible. Right. We have to do our job, which is to make it so the American people see our fair share. So does that, I mean, just to argue the other side for a second, d would that increase... And presumably it would increase the cost to American consumers of goods, right? Well, in some instances, uh, in some cases, uh, the companies will find cost efficiencies or eat part of it. Um, and that's one reason why my uh, campaign wants to take that money that we're getting from the value-added tax and return it to the American people in the form of a dividend, uh, because that's the most direct way that we can actually have the American people benefit. Uh, the fear is that even if we do end up increasing the tax rate on some of these companies, that the American people won't benefit from that. Because that money will be swallowed by our political machine somehow? Yeah, it'll go into the, the giant uh, pipes uh, of D.C. never to be seen or heard from again. And so the, the goal is to make sure that doesn't happen by putting those economic resources directly into the hands of the American people. But wouldn't that be bad for those of us who live in the District of Columbia and own property here? I mean, wouldn't it be better for us if we could hoard all the money? I have a feeling you all would be fine. <laughs> well, I mean, as you know, Tucker, Washington, D.C., I believe, has the highest per capita income in the country at this point. So, uh, I, you know, I have a feeling that the boutique restaurants will still have plenty of business. Okay. It's because we're making innovative products the world wants to buy. No, sorry. It's because we're taking your money by force and hoarding it. Andrew Yang, certainly the most interesting person running for president. And I sounds like a great idea to me. I appreciate it. Thanks very much. Thank you, Tucker. See you soon. See you.